हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग यस इन लास्ट लेक्चर इन फोटोकेमिस्ट्री वी हैव सीन डार्क रिएक्शन डिफरेंस बिटवीन डार्क रिएक्शन एंड फोटोकेमिकल रिएक्शन व्हाट इज मीन बाय फोटोकेमिकल रिएक्शन लॉज ऑफ फोटोकेमिस्ट्री इन दैट लॉज ऑफ फोटोकेमिस्ट्री वी हैव सीन फर्स्ट लॉ that is the grothus and trappers law as well as lambert's law lambert beer's law and stark einstein law law of photochemical equivalence and on the basis of law of photochemical equivalence we are started what is quantum yield yes quantum yield now in this lecture we will see what is mean by quantum yield how it is calculated in some cases quantum yield is very high in some cases quantum yield is very low and what are the reasons behind this quantum yield low quantum yield and high quantum yield as well as we will see some photosensitized reaction what is mean by photosensitized reaction and some of the examples okay okay now uh, according to law of photochemical equivalence one molecule absorbs one quantum of energy and quantum yield phi what is phi it is the number of molecules reacting per quantum of energy or number of moles reacting per einstein of energy okay or it is the ratio of number of moles reacting in given time it is the ratio of number of moles of substance reacting in a given time to the number of einsteins absorbed in same time you know the what is einstein energy or you can write this quantum yield phi as instead of moles you can write number of molecules ab reacting in given time to the number of quantas absorbed in same time okay in actual practice according to law of photochemical equivalence this phi should be 1 or nearly equal to 1 theoretically because one molecule absorbs one quantum of energy that's why this ratio should be 1 or in the range of 1 nearly equal to 1 <coughs> but in actual practice this is low in some cases this is low very low or it may be high or very high very high this quantum yield it is very significant in photochemistry it is useful to describe the mechanism of reaction mechanism of photochemical reaction with help of quantum yield we can explain predict the mechanism of reaction that's why this quantum yield is very very important point in photochemistry <coughs> now in some cases this quantum yield is high and in some cases it is low we will see what are the reasons behind this variation of quantum yield in order to explain this uh, reason reasons behind this low or high quantum yield we have to consider or we have to uh, think about actual process what is happening after absorption of radiation if we know the process then we can 
uh, explain why in some cases it is low or why in some cases it is very high. Actually, what happens in case of photochemical reaction, the reaction took place in two steps. First step is a primary process. In primary process, what happens according to Einstein's law, Stark-Einstein law, one molecule, no doubt, one molecule absorbs one quantum of energy. Or one photon. Okay, one molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation. And this molecule, absorbed molecule A, suppose we consider A, it will absorb one quantum of radiation, one photon, and it will undergo excitation. High energy state called as an excited state. And, and in this excited state, the molecule may form free radical, it may undergo dissociation and it will form free atoms or free radicals. This is the photochemical primary process. Got it? In photochemical primary process, one molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation and undergoes excitation. But this is an unstable state. In excited state, it undergoes dissociation, forms atoms and radicals. And what happens in secondary process? Whatever may be the radicals or atoms formed in photochemical primary process, these atoms reacts in secondary process and this reaction may took place in dark also because already reactive intermediates that is uh, radicals or atoms are formed they are highly reactive and these atoms form radicals form these reacts with another substance suppose B and forms the product but during formation of product, during formation of product, there may be the formation of another radical X. This X may react with another reactant molecule B. Okay. Means during secondary process, radical formed, no doubt it reacts with another reactant molecule in secondary process and these number of molecules reacting in secondary process are different in different case. That's why the quantum yield may be low or may be high. Now, okay, you will got this. Two processes are taking place, primary process and secondary process. In primary process, there is an excitation and formation of radicals or atoms and in secondary process radicals reacts with another reactant. Now what happens if there is a high quantum yield? In certain reactions, in certain reaction there is a very high quantum yield. In some reaction there is a very high quantum yield. Now, why this quantum yield is very high? Now, we will see the reasons behind this high quantum yield. What happens, whatever may be the radicals, no doubt the primary process exactly follow the law, that is Stark-Einstein law, one molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation and that excited molecule forms radicals. Now, what happens in secondary process? These radicals formed in the primary process, they react with another molecule B. And this B will form no doubt product. But during formation of product, there may be formation of another intermediate X. This X may react with another B, gives product plus some certain Y. 
or whatever may be. In that case, the quantum yield by absorption of one molecule, large number of molecules are reacting. Some in some cases, what happens? In some cases, what happens? These excited molecules, excited atoms, molecules, radicals, they transfer energy. They transfer energy to another molecule, second molecule. Second molecule is getting excited. This second molecule may transfer the energy to the third molecule. Third molecule get, may get excited and so on. Thus, chain reaction starts and large number of molecules undergoes excitation and for one quantum of radiation, large number of molecules are reacting. Now, in some cases, quantum yield will be high if in the secondary process there is a formation of reactive intermediates or if there is a formation of some substances which acts as a catalyst. In secondary process, the product formula may act as a catalyst and it will increase the rate and it will uh, increase the quantum yield. Or another reason behind it, if the secondary process is exothermic, then also due to production of heat exothermic reaction means heat is evolved and this heat evolved may activate another molecule and due to which high quantum yield will be observed is there are three four reasons for high quantum yield okay radicals may forms intermediates intermediates may react with another molecule for the product Excited molecule may transfer energy to another molecule and so on the chain will go on. There may be the formation of intermediate which acts as a catalyst and the reaction may be exothermic reaction and due to exothermic reaction the thermal reaction will be activated and the quantum yield will be high. Now we will see uh, one of the example. Consider the hydrogen halogen reaction. For example, reaction between H2 and Cl2. This H2 and Cl2 reaction of hydrogen and chlorine, it is a photochemical reaction. If we produce or if we flash a light in the visible region on chlorine, what happens? This chlorine absorbs quantum of radiation one molecule no doubt this is the primary process this is the primary process one molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation one molecule absorbs one quantum of radiation and due to which there will be the formation of excited state chlorine but excited state chlorine undergoes dissociation to form Cl free radicals. There is a dissociation of chlorine and formation of Cl free radical takes place. Now what happens in this reaction the quantum yield is in the range of 10 raise to 4 to 10 raise to 6 not 1. It is in the range of 10 raise to 4 to 10 raise to 6 very high quantum yield. Even flash of light starts the reaction that is primary process forms the Cl free radical. Now in secondary uh, reaction what happens? This Cl free radical reacts with hydrogen molecule forms HCl plus H free radical is formed. This H free radical suppose equation 1 H free radical again reacts with Cl2 molecule forms HCl that is product and formation of Cl free radical. This Cl free radical again react with H2 molecule to form HCl and H free radical and the reaction continues and the reaction continues. Cl free radicals 
formed in this step they are continuously used and there is a formation of h free radical h free radicals are again continuously used again production of cr free radical such reactions are called as a chain reaction for absorption of few contas large amount of h2 and cl2 reacts together to form hcl yes due to which the quantum yield is very high but what happens for according to this reaction for one quantum if one molecule starts the reaction one quantum of radiation is absorbed then the reaction should not stop the quantum yield should be infinite whatever be the amount of h2 and cl2 is there all hydrogen and chlorine should react together right to form hcl but this is not happening in actual practice what happens these free radicals they are also called as chain carriers they may collide with each other to form h2 this cl free radical may collide with another cl free radical form cl2 or h free radical may reacts with cl free radical to form hcl or sometimes what happens this h free radical may react with atmospheric oxygen h free radical may reacts with oxygen forms ho2 free radical means there are some steps which removes the chain carriers these are called as chain carriers there are some reactions which breaks the chain therefore the quantum yield is not infinite quantum yield is in the range of 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 6 yes got it why quantum yield is very high in some cases quantum yield is very low now why quantum yield is low if the product of excited particles in primary process cannot react whatever may be the product formed in primary process suppose a absorbs quantum of radiation forms a star okay and this a star may produces some radical say suppose x and if this excited state molecule may collide with normal molecule and energy is exchanged energy is exchanged this is called as a deactivation this process is the activation this process is the deactivation now this collision may be with the wall of container activated molecule may collide with another molecule or may collide with wall of container and it may undergoes deactivation and deactivation causes low quantum yield or sometimes what happens this a star means activated state molecule may come to ground state by emission of radiation radiation may be emitted this is called as a fluorescence we will see in next lecture what is fluorescence okay this activated molecule may undergoes deactivation either by collision or by emission of radiation due to which there is a low quantum yield okay sometimes what happens whatever may be the product formed in primary process may recombine to the reactant means as like a termination process here we have seen this yet cl may reacts with cl to form cl2 in some reaction not in case of h2 and cl2 but in some reaction these molecules whatever may be the product formed may forms a reversible reaction may undergoes reversible reaction due to which quantum yield will be 
high. Okay. In some cases, the quantum yield will be low. But we can't say whether quantum yield is 1, very high, very low. We have to do experiment. And with that experiment, we can determine the quantum yield. And from that quantum yield, we can suggest a proper mechanism for a particular reaction. That is the use of this quantum yield. Now, in some cases, suppose we consider A plus B, consider this reaction. Suppose we are doing this reaction photochemically, but neither A nor B is able to absorb the radiation. If molecules are not able to absorb the radiation, then the reaction will not be there. Photochemical reaction will not be there. But if we add some certain substances called as a photosensitizer, another substance is added in the reaction mixture called as a photosensitizer. Then the reaction is called as a photosensitized reaction. Yes, in some cases, either of the reactant molecules are not able to absorb the radiation. If we add some another substance, they are called as a photosensitizer or simply sensitizer. These molecule absorbs radiation, the sensitizer absorbs radiation and this energy is transferred to the reacting molecule. Such reactions are called as a photosensitized reaction. Yes, simple example we will see the de uh, dissociation of hydrogen. If we consider the dissociation of hydrogen, there is a H H bond. There is a certain energy, bond energy. This bond energy, if we radiate or if we bombard radiations more than the bond energy energy of radiation is determined by E is equal to H nu or Hc upon lambda from this equation if we determine the energy of radiation and if we consider the bond energy then it is found that the radiations in the range of ultraviolet 2, 5, 3, 7 angstrom wavelength radiations. These radiations have a higher energy than this bond energy. Hydrogen, hydrogen bond energy. HH bond energy. These radiations have a higher energy than HH bond energy. Then this energy, these radiations should break this HH bond. Radiations have a high energy, that's why it should break that HH bond. But H2 is not able to absorb these radiations. Hydrogen doesn't absorb these radiations. That's why if we add some amount of mercury, mercury vapors in hydrogen gas, and if we bombard these radiations, then there is a dissociation. What happens actually, this Hg absorbs this radiation and undergoes excitation, excited state Hg will be formed and this excited Hg transfer energy to the hydrogen and there is a formation of H free radicals. Yes. Here, this Hg acts as a photosensitizer. And another example is a very simple, you know this example, that is the photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, this photosynthesis is carried out by green plants. Green plants in presence of visible light that is from 
4000 angstrom to 8000 angstrom now what is the actual photosynthesis reaction what is happening in green plants co2 and h2o hydro uh, water molecule combines together forms c6 h12 o6 plus o2 if we balance this reaction the reaction will be 6 co2 6 h2o forms a molecule of glucose and oxygen is evolved this is the simple photochemical reaction green plants takes co2 combines with water co2 and water combines together forms a glucose but is it possible without light it is not possible without light this reaction took place only in presence of visible light but this visible light is neither absorbed by co2 nor by water both are unable to absorb these radiations now what is the photosensitizer yes chlorophyll 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 is a green substance present in green plants it is able to absorb radiation from sun visible radiations are absorbed by this chlorophyll these energy absorbed by the radio uh, this chlorophyll is given to this reacting molecule co2 and water and in presence of light only this photosynthesis reaction took place and here chlorophyll acts as a photosensitizer it is a sensitizer yes got it yes good now if we consider this quantum yield what we seen in quantum yield in some cases it is very low in some cases it is very high but in actual uh, practice we can determine the quantum yield with the help of that equation and if the reaction is not taking place in presence of light we have to use this photosensitizer they are called as photosensitized reaction okay now we will see another reactions that is photochemical reactions which do not require photosensitizer example of that uh, reaction is the reaction uh, decomposition of hydrogen halide decomposition of suppose hi you will see decomposition of hi if we consider the reaction there is a formation of h2 and i2 hi decomposes forms h2 and i2 okay now we will not consider this reaction initially what happens on absorption of radiation this hi molecule absorbs a quantum of radiation forms a h free radical and i free radical this in this is the photochemical primary process now in secondary process what happens this i free radical Uh, not i free radical this h free radical reacts with another hi molecule forms h2 and i free radical and these i free radicals combines together forms i2 this is the actual process now 
if we combine these two reactions, the overall reaction will be, what will be the overall reaction? 2HI in presence of light or by absorption of one quantum of radiation forms H2 and I2. Okay. Means for absorption of one quantum of radiation, two HI molecules are decomposing. That's why the quantum yield should be two. Quantum yield should be two. And uh, theoretically, if we determine the quantum yield of this decomposition of HI, it is in the range of two. It is in the range of two. But as the reaction proceeds, initially it is 2, but as reaction proceeds, what happens? These H free radicals may react with I2 and forms HI and I free radicals. Means this reverse reaction may took place. And due to this reverse reaction, as time passes, the quantum yield decreases. This, there is a reverse reaction also. Similarly, if we consider the decomposition of HBr to give H2 and Br2, same reaction took place. But as time passes, the quantum yield falls down very quickly as compared to HI. As compared to HI, the quantum yield of decomposition, mechanism is same, but quantum yield falls below to very quickly because as bromine molecular bromine concentration increases it combines with hydrogen radical and forms HBr this reaction is very fast as compared to this reaction as compared to decomposition of HI the decomposition of, in case of decomposition of HBr, the quantum yield is low. Okay. Another example of photochemical reaction is a dimerization of anthracene. It is a photochemical equilibrium re reaction. What happens? Anthracene, if we consider anthracene, what is the molecular formula of anthracene? C14 H10 C14 H10 Now if we make a solution of anthracene in benzene two molecules of anthracene undergoes dimerization forms a dianthracene C14 H10 twice Anthracene molecule undergoes dimerization forms a dianthracene. Okay. This is the actual reaction. In usual case also, anthracene is in equilibrium with dianthracene. If we prepare its solution in benzene or inert solvent, any other inert solvent. But if we bombard radiation on this solution, what happens? this anthracene molecule undergoes dianthracene. Concentration of dianthracene increases. Concentration of dianthracene increases. This is the dark reaction, formation of dimerization. But after equilibrium is obtained, if we bombard radiation on it, what happens? This anthracene undergoes dimerization, anthracene uh, C14 H10 it absorbs radiation forms a excited state C14 H10 and this excited C14 H10 may react with another C14 H10 another anthracene molecule forms a dianthracene this is the actual photochemical reaction Initially, it is at equilibrium condition, but if we bombard radiation, concentration of anthracene goes on decreasing. 
why concentration goes on decreasing there is a formation of dianthus and as concentra after long time what happens concentration of now concentration of dianthracin also increases but according to law of mass action rate is directly proportional to concentration as time passes rate of backward reaction also increases and a state of equilibrium is obtained initially no doubt there is a state of equilibrium but after bombardment of radiations this process takes place rate of forward reaction increases but after some time rate of backward reaction also increases as there is increase in dianthracin concentration and a new equilibrium is obtained that is called as a photostationary state it is called as a photostationary state or photochemical equilibrium there is a formation of photochemical equilibrium and if we consider this uh, as concentration of anthracin increases and no doubt anthracin is a fluorescent molecule it emit radiation if we increase the concentration of anthracin what happens fluorescent decreases why fluorescent decreases there is a increase in dimerization there is a increase in dimerization due to which as concentration of anthracin increases there is a high quantum yield and there is a formation of dimer yes this is the which shows low quantum yield in some because some excited molecule may loses their energy due to collision with solvent molecule in here also there is a uh, not uh, equal to 2 from this reaction quantum yield should be 2 but here also quantum yield is not 2 it is less than 2 because there is again thermal decomposition as well as collision of molecule with wall of container as well as collision of molecule with solvent molecule and due to collision there is a deactivation and this deactivation produces low quantum yield okay got it this is about the photochemical reaction okay thank you in next lecture we will see the actual photochemical process what are the processes taking place after excitation what happens after exci uh, excitation of molecule processes taking place in excited state okay thank you